a most sincere word of welcome to all of you here at Holy Cross this morning as we come now to be with one another, to be with Eleanor in a most special way, and to be with our God. We come to commend her to the God who has graciously lavished her with so many blessings in this life and now is about to or is in the process of sharing with her those glories that we cannot even imagine. Let us pray. O oh God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son Jesus died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant Eleanor, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise through him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Please be seated for the liturgy of the word. The first reading from the Old Testament will be done by Eleanor's granddaughter, Selena. A reading from the book of Proverbs. When one finds a worthy wife, her value is far beyond pearls. Her husband, entrusting his heart to her, has an unfailing prize. She brings him good and not evil all the days of her life. She obtains wool and flax and makes cloth with skillful hands. Like merchant ships, she secures her provisions from afar. She rises while it is still night and distributes food to her household. She is clothed with strength and her sturdy arms. She enjoys the success of her dealings. At night, her lamp is undimmed. She puts her hands to the distaff and her fingers ply the spindle. She is clothed with strength and dignity and she laughs at the days to come. She opens her mouth in wisdom and on her tongue is kindly counsel. She watches the conduct of her household and eats not her food in idleness. Her children rise up and praise her. Her husband, too, extols her. Many are the women of proven worth, but you have excelled them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty fleeting. The woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her reward of her labors and let her works praise her at the city gates. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The second reading from the New Testament will be done by Eleanor's granddaughter, Katie. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, about those who have fallen asleep, so that you may not grieve like the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose, so too will God, through Jesus, bring with him those who have fallen asleep. Indeed, we tell you this on the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will surely not precede those who have fallen asleep, and with the trumpet of God will come down from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, console one another with these words. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to John. When Jesus arrived in the village was not far from Jerusalem, just under two miles, and many Jewish people have come out to console Martha and Mary over their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, while Mary remained at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Your brother will rise, Jesus said to her. Martha said, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. And then Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even in death, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will not die forever. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God to the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. First in order today, uh, speaking for Father Wheeland, who is kind of celebrating here with me, for uh, our seminarian Michael attending at the altar here, and uh, Ann Johnson, our Director of Ministries, and myself, and our whole parish family 
I want to offer to Jack and to the Morgan family our church's words of love and sympathy. You've already received, I'm sure, from many, many different quarters, expressions of love and sympathy. Here today is the church's opportunity, specifically the opportunity of our Holy Cross family, our Holy Cross community. It's our opportunity to offer whatever we can by way of love and uh, sympathy and just a certain kind of togetherness with all of you. Along these lines, I'd, I'd like to put some of the thoughts that the family has generously shared with me to share with you. I'd like to put together some of the thoughts from our readings. The main overriding thing about this wonderful lady is the fact that she was so totally devoted to her husband, her children, her grandchildren, her great graduated from Geneseo as a teacher. She went on maternity leave, maternity leave 58 years ago, and she never returned to teaching. <laughs> that was a loss for the potential students that she could have had, but it was a great gain for husband, children, later on grandchildren, great-grandchildren. In other words, I think it's fairly safe to say she was very much of a family person. In the earlier days of TV, when there were so many of those uh, uh, game contests and so forth with contestants from all over the country, and they would ask the, 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 the uh, MC of the program would ask, um, the contestants what was their work and the among the male contestants was usually something like a working at a utility company or insurance or uh, medicine or law or whatever it was and then when he, the can the mc would ask the lady most of the time it was simply one word homemaker homemaker and that takes its place right along with the other occupations and in some cases it surpasses the other one of the things from the first reading that we heard from the book of proverbs is about the lady of the house or household way back in ancient times and through all the middle ages where when she had the opportunity to sit at the spinning wheel, in so many cases, it gave the impression that her hands were flying over the material and over the mecha mechanism of the spinning wheel. And that was when she was maybe at rest a little bit from being the head of the household while her husband was maybe off fighting in the Crusades and the lady of the manor was the administrator of her own family, servants, sometimes partly of a monastery or a convent that was connected with the feudal estate. That kind of a lady was the forerunner of some women today who are heads of corporations. And yet, how wonderful is the side that is called homemaker. Our second reading, not describing any kind of a lady's work of, of spinning or weave, weaving or sewing or anything like that, but simply giving us a glimpse of what the process of transitioning from this life is like. The Thessalonians were privileged by St. Paul to have the kinds of things that we heard in the second reading describing the transition from this life to the next, about which we know very little. 
And then the third reading, the gospel, brings us back to this life again from the perspective that Jesus was being questioned by this wonderful lady who herself, together with her sister, was, or the two of them were kind of like co-homemakers there in a little home of, Na of Bethany. Bethany. And their brother was the one who had died. And so the lady who was so well known for putting meals together and so forth, is the same one, namely Martha, who wanted to know what's what and who's who. You can almost hear her saying to Jesus, where were you when we needed you? And so it went on from that to a little bit about eternity. Jesus said, your brother will rise. And she, demonstrating some knowledge of what some of the people in Old Testament times really knew, she said, I know he will rise on the resurrection, in the resurrection on the last day. So she knew a lot of things about her faith. But then Jesus, of course, came in with the now very famous words, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even in death, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will not die forever. So um, we go back and forth from this life to the next, from this life to the next. And we find Jesus giving Martha an answer that, was, that would far surpass what he later did a little few minutes later by raising Lazarus from the dead and adding on some extra years. This, light, this uh, statement that Jesus gave uh, is the best of all. I am the resurrection and the life. We all know what he means by that. But getting back to this life with Eleanor, we, we discover that she attended all the sporting events for her children and her grandchildren. She was famous in the culinary line for German potato salad. Could put 10 pounds of bacon in the salad, but it was never enough for her children, even with the 10 pounds of bacon. I think Steve has picked up on that very well. <laughs> Not as a consumer of bacon, but as a provider. <laughs> for all our festivals and many, many other events that have nothing to do with bacon grease at all. <laughs> and then chocolate ice cream was her favorite. And I think she shares that uh, with, many, with millions and millions. She played solitary and, until the, she almost wore the spots off the cards. She wore ten and a half size shoes and she was teased by her family that she could water ski without the skis, but she didn't even swim. <laughs> so somehow she got to the water skiing, or at least in their imaginations. She never drove a car. She remembered her pets from her childhood, such interesting names. <laughs> A fleecy for a sheep, a pet sheep, she had fleecy. Well, that certainly makes sense. And then Perky the dog, and, and so forth. Uh, but one of the interesting things, uh, liturgically, she was way ahead of many, many other Catholics because from her sorority experience at uh, SUNY Geneseo, she loved to sing. Would that that could be said about the average Catholic at a mass today, love to say. <laughs> but we have the excuse that in, in our ancestry from many parts of Europe, where our Catholic Church was being persecuted from time to time, uh, any kind of singing was, was just uh, forbidden because so many of our Catholics of centuries ago had to worship underground, literally or in some kind of a little tiny hidden place out in the country. But 
uh, the fact that she did love to sing, that gives impetus to uh, musicians in the life of the church who long to have good congregational singing as we do here at Holy Cross, thank God. But all of these different things add to the beautiful picture of who Eleanor not only was, but still is, in the hearts, in the souls of you family members and so many people who loved her. Your numbers alone speak volumes today for this. And uh, getting to back to St. Paul, who, as I mentioned in that second reading, gives us some wonderful insights about uh, some of the transitioning into the next world uh, at voice of Archangel and things like that. Another place among Paul's wonderful, wonderful teachings has to do with the fact that after all is said and done, the next world is such an awesome mystery that nobody but nobody Jesus does as he introduces now Eleanor to the Eternal Father and with Mary so close and Joseph and everybody. He says, St. Paul says, eye has not seen, ear has not heard what God has prepared for those who love him. Following next is our prayer of the faithful, general intercessions, and please stand. God our Father, we think of Eleanor in the wonderful ways in which she entered into church and family and life itself, and we now offer our petitions for her and for ourselves this day. Our sister Eleanor was nourished at the table of the Lord. Welcome her into the halls of the heavenly banquet. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who loved and were loved by Eleanor, that we may find comfort in our belief in the Lord's promise to us of eternal life. Lord, Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For each of us with whom Eleanor so generously shared her many gifts, May we, too, grow in our ability to share our gifts and lighten the burdens of others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all who have died in the hope of rising again, especially Eleanor, her brother Donald, and her daughter Kathleen. Welcome them, Lord, into the light of your presence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Eleanor's family, for her husband Jack, her children, Stephen and Kathleen, Jean and John, Bill and Renee, Mary and Arthur, and Daniel, her many grandchildren and great-grandchildren, her sister Jane and Bill, and for all of her family and friends, that they will know the peace of the Lord in this time of sadness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for each of us here present that God will bless us richly with the gifts he knows we need to fully celebrate life and recognize the new beginning which he gives us each day. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Eternal Father, we thank you for the wonderful life of this lady who truly loved the domestic scene within house and household of her family, immediate family, extended family, and so forth, and who also truly loved the church family, her parish church, and the liturgical scene with which she so rejoiced in song. We ask your blessing now upon her family members here today and upon all of us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The gifts of bread and wine to be used at this Mass will be brought forward by Mrs. Morgan's grandchildren. 
As the gifts are being brought forward, please join in the offertory hymn number 690 on Eagle's Wings, found in the red hymnals in the pews. Number 690 on Eagle's Wings. Brothers and sisters, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be near, O Lord, we pray to your servant Eleanor, on whose funeral day we offer you this sacrifice of conciliation, so that should any stain of sin have clung to her, or any human fault have affected her, it may be by your loving gift forgiven and taken away through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with and your spirit. spirit. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right, just, our duty, and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned. 
that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of eternal life to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Salvatore, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Eleanor, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she, who was united with you in the death of baptism, may also be united with you in the resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters 
who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed St. Joseph, with the Blessed Apostles, with all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. be singing today the traditional Lord's Prayer at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching. said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. As we prepare for communion today, we remind everyone that those planning to receive and who are prepared to receive are asked to come forward up toward the sanctuary here <clears throat> through the middle aisle, either side of the Paschal candle, and then return by the side aisles. And those wanting to partake of the Eucharist under both forms of the consecrated bread and wine there will be ministers of the cup on either side. For those not receiving today, we simply encourage you to be uh, very much a part of our scene through your love and prayer this morning.
The Morgan family would like to thank you for being here and sharing in the celebration of Mrs. Morgan's life. They invite you to join them at a reception in the parish church at the beginning of Mass. If you did not have an opportunity to sign that book, it will be by the parish center entrance so that you may do so on your way to the reception. For those of you who have family or friends that were not able to join us this morning, the Mass has been live streamed and will be uploaded so that you may watch it later today or tomorrow or at a later date by going to www.holycrossrochester.org. On the right-hand side, there's a site for streaming, and then you may watch the Mass later or share it with family and friends. At this time, we invite Mrs. Morgan's granddaughter, Kathleen, to come forward and share some words of remembrance. Kindness, patience, joy, and love, the four things that were constant in the presence of my grandmother. Her kindness knew no bounds. Very rarely, if ever, do I remember a mean word spoken by her. On the rare occasion Grandma would curse, it was met by a shocked granny, spoken by those close enough to hear it. All who loved her knew the kind smile that would greet you and the warm hug you would get just for walking through the door. Patience. If you need evidence of her patience, just look at the clan she raised. <laughs> In my 25 years, there's not a time I remember Grandma raising her voice. There was also her work as a teacher. It would be impossible for someone not to be patient in that line of work. Always patient, always kind, even when dealing with a boy whom she said told her he ain't got no intelligence. Joy. Grandma brought joy to us all. She made us laugh with her stories and the way she would share pictures and memories. The way she never lost her sense of humor kept us joyful. The first Christmas after her diagnosis, Grandma was passing cards to all of us grandkids as she always did. She came to me and looked at me with a fake puzzled look on her face and said, now who are you again? I must have looked terrified because Grandma started laughing and said, I am just kidding. <laughs> Grandma brought joy to everything. Her laughter could light up a room. Her kind smile warm your heart. Love. Grandma loved us all. When we would come for a visit, she would light up, always happy to see us, happily chatting and listening. Coming to events, graduations, games, competitions, always smiling warmly and happy to be there. Unless there was thunder. If there was thunder, she was probably hiding under a bed somewhere. You could feel her love when you spoke with her just by being in her presence. Kindness, patience, joy, and love. They are things I learned from Grandma. Things that make me who I am allow me to follow the path that I am on. And I am sure I speak for everyone here when I say that I am grateful to have learned these things from the best. 
Recently, not goodbye. Simply, I love you because she always knew she would see us again. So I am not going to say goodbye. I'm just going to say I love you, Granny. Many, many thanks for the wonderful eulogy that we just heard. And also now thanking Glenn Jansen for the bagpipes and all the wonderful things that go with that, from the various hymns that we know to nationality events and wonderful, wonderful music. I'm sure that Eleanor, from her place in heaven, is observing the music here today. And uh, as we transition now from the usual format and following our post-communion prayer, we will have the special prayers that we have at every funeral liturgy. And uh, there will be a place for you to please join in there towards the end in the spoken response. And at that time, we'll be in the on the inside portion of the back cover. So many, many thanks to all who have had anything whatever to do with today's liturgy. And we will certainly extend the oneness of our togetherness here in church down later into the parish center, where, as Ann said, all are invited. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, almighty God, that your servant Eleanor, who at this time has journeyed from this world, may, by the sacrifice, may by this sacrifice of the Mass be cleansed and freed from sin, and so receive the everlasting joys of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister Eleanor. May our farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself.
Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister Eleanor in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed on our sister in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to com comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our sister forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now again, those following along after the word all, in the sure hope of the resurrection, we take leave of our sister and let us go in peace together. May the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. <laughs> 